In today's video, I'm throwing your way more tips than this game can throw trolls at me. Four trolls! There are four! Is that, is, that, is that a fifth? This fucking six trolls, bro. Holy fuck! We're gonna be talking about base building and a few tips that could possibly spice up your next base design. I'm your boy Winner Phoenix, and if you like this video or it's helped you in any way, drop a like and a comment to see even more just like this. Let's get started. My first tip is about the fireplace or hearth. It's the first piece you put down as it allows you to build outside any pre-designed camps and it's the first step to mastering building in Return to Moria. But that doesn't mean it has to be basic and boring as f Add some flavor to your base build by slapping a doorway down right behind your hearth's desired location. Then go into your wall selection and pick a wall to fill in the doorway. This creates a chimney build out to make those hearts look more homey. I like to throw up some sloped corner walls as shelving for storage boxes, more on those later, and a crown to the chimney for that little extra detail. Done are the days of boring hearths and a born anew, a more proficient builder. If the fireplace glow up is your first step in your rehabilitation program for the I suck at building anonymous, then the doorway is your next step in your 10 week program because there's more that they can do than lead you to the next room. We use them in our fireplace builds and now we can use them again in the shape of hallways. You don't always have to have boxed hallways, but instead you can create little tunnels to more rooms for a different feeling. This can also be done by layering a long corridor with door openings for a more mystical look. Instead of just lining a hallway with slabs of stone, Try using doorways for little tunnels or go for that regal feeling with a corridor approach. Either way, think outside the box a bit with doorways and you'd be surprised what you can do. In the spirit of things can do more than one thing, we have the fence pieces as well. As you can see, these little fence pieces look great as accent pieces for windows, chimneys, and you can even make an entire wall out of them. Use these fence pieces to add a little pop of detail to complement your builds. A lot of the times you can rotate these pieces and they will allow you to hide the post, creating this unique look with just the fence sticking out. Or use them like we did on the fire pit to add another element of flair. All throughout the mines of Moria, you're gonna find a lot of structures made by the dwarves way before you. They are in rough shape, but they add a little bit of life to your builds when you add to them. Here I have an old building off to the side of the area that I started to build in. I could knock it down and put on my own structures, but why, when this one looks so interesting already? Instead, we cleared out the garbage and added a brew tank. Most people climb a ladder system to get to the top of their tank and make their brews, but not us. We basically have a dedicated bar and the second floor is our VIP section and brewing point because we fancy now and basic isn't gonna cut it anymore. This next one took some time to figure out, but I'm glad I did. For this tip, we're gonna build crop planters of light and darkness right on top of each other in the same room, and they both produce resources. Here, we have what I like to call the day garden, and I grow all my crops for cooking and brewing right here. I can cycle out any crops I need to make sure I'm growing what I need most, but this comes with the problem of needing mushrooms and weed. Enters my night sky garden. This baby is literally built right above our day garden, but it's so high in the sky, it gets no light, making it perfect for growing mushrooms and weeds in the same area. But one's in the sky. I, I, I still can't get over that. It's crazy. It's in the sky. It's floating. It's floating. This next bit is really just to thank all the supporters over my last few videos, and some of you have even gone above and beyond just subscribing. I've gained with some of you and now even gotten help with my logo. You all want to see me grow, and I love it so much. So, introducing the new logo from one of you guys. Like and subscribe so I can keep bringing you better videos and thanks again to the community for believing in me. Back to the video. This next tip I learned while building my sky garden and it's how to calculate fall damage in a building video. Now, bear with me because I'm about to explain. In this game you can build rope ladders and while they may not look very useful in the beginning, you'd be wrong. The rope ladder is useful in building because you can build off of it making it easier to build upwards but the ladder also tells you the maximum height you can fall from before taking fall damage. You can also use this tip when building really tall structures or when scaling some of the deepest parts of Moria. I also use these when I have to get to the second floor but have limited space. You can jump on the ladders as you climb them so make a tight opening with the rope ladders and you can actually jump through to the next floor without getting stuck. Stop taking all that pointless fall damage with this tip and keep those knees in tip top shape. Some of the best dance moves in this game require it. My way. Moving on from vertical building to horizontal building, you can build on as big a surface as you want to, as long as you know this next tip. The hearse will allow you to build in a fixed area, 
but if you build a few of them, you can stretch that effective area much larger. What is even more exciting than that is that all the chests in the area can be pulled from as well. So if you set up hearth number one and put a chest down to pull from when building, the same items will be available when you add a second hearth to the chain, allowing you to build as big as you actually want to. This next tip is all about those boxes dropped all over your bases to store loot. Sure, it's the simplest way to store your loot, but that's not enough, and that's not why you're here. So I introduce to you the library. This is where we dump all our loot and resources at the end of any run. Combined with the previous tip, and we have access to everything no matter where we are on the base. But it's not enough just to shove all your boxes in a dark closet of the base. Instead, we turn those ugly boxes into an aesthetically pleasing site, while maintaining their same function while scattered around on the ground. Secondly, the chest can also also be balanced on fences, which allows us to go even further than just placing floors as shelving. Small balconies are used in here to give us our wraparound walkway and rope ladders to get up and down. The library is in the back of the base, so we have hero shrines in here for the buffs and they look good in these little cubbies on the ground level. You can make these after collecting 5 hero tokens after honoring fallen dwarves out in the mines. This next tip is probably a little basic, but it's a necessity if you want to build truly amazing bases, and it's about shifting levels and adjusting depths on build pieces. Using the mouse wheel, you can move building pieces closer and further away from you before setting them. Oh, you already knew that. Did you know holding left shift allows you to move those pieces up and down when you roll your mouse wheel? Oh, you knew that too. Damn. What well, did you know that pressing G changes your view to allow easier stacking? Ha! Didn't think so. Well. Now you do. And if you knew that last tip too, then remember this. No one likes to know it all, and I'm trying to make a video here. Come on. This next one is about the hammer and its uses. It's easy to forget you even need a hammer besides fixing statues out in the mines, but did you know there's more to it than that? In fact, the hammer is your pathway to unlocking more build pieces. Upgrade the hammer every chance you get, and you'll unlock new building pieces to play with. Eventually, you'll gain access to sloped blocks, and these are fun to mess around with. Yes, there don't seem to be dedicated roof pieces, but sloped pieces can give you that little detail instead of just boxing yourself in. Hang them off the top of a wall before closing in your build. This creates a little soft and facial look and create snap points for your ceilings. The hammer is also used to repair your damage walls after a raid. Just pull it out and hover it over a building item. It'll display its damage percentages and if you need to repair it. Depending on the amount of damage, just a few swings and your base is back to 100%. That's all for now. Like and subscribe. Bye!